we're still of the view that if gold has a major bull market that it's already in the process of, and this has just merely been a two-year interruption, which happens, by the way, in many of the gold bull markets, that there's a major interruption that lasts for a couple of years, uh, then silver will whiplash far greater on the upside on a percent basis than gold. It's a situation also that a lot of people are looking at the stock market and they're, they, they're recognizing finally, and we got bearish in January of this year, by the way, on NASDAQ 100 in February for S&P, major long-term bearish. So literally a few months off the high. And since then, we've seen a, a, a significant decline, not a collapse, but a significant decline in layers. We think it could pick up some speed here soon. In recent months, gold has joined in on that. Okay, now the same kind of thing happened back in October of 2008 when the stock market had already been a year off of its high. It was October 2008. Heck, it had peaked in October 2007. In October 2008, it had a crash like event in the SP where you went down like 30 some odd percent during the month of October. At that, that same month, gold finally decided, I think I'll join in. So gold, for a matter of several weeks within the month of October, collapsed with the S&P, and everybody thought, oh, it's going to continue down with the S&P. Within a few months, gold was back at its high, and a few months later, S&P was continuing to make new lows, so totally divorced, despite that breakage that scared so many people in October 2008, which we think to some extent is very similar to what we've just seen in gold now where the price charts look terrible, but the momentum charts say, uh-uh, something's wrong here. Don't believe what the price chart's telling you. So we shall see. But over the coming weeks, I think a lot of the evidence that we're looking for is going to come into play, such that paper asset category, which is a broken bubble now. Uh, we had a seven-fold bull market in the S&P over the prior dozen years, up to 2021 promoted by QEs, QEs, and uh, zero rates. And you had a 16-fold bull market in the NASDAQ 100. You've never in the history of the United States had a stock market paper asset bubble of that dimension. Even the 1923 to 1929 bull is like a, a tripling. The dot-com bubble was nothing compared to what we've just seen. The 2003 low to the 2007 high, when we came down in 2009, we thought it was the end of the world. It was only a doubling that we'd seen between 2003 and 2007. Here we have a sevenfold and a 16-fold, and people don't acknowledge the difference. When this thing comes apart, it's going to be horrendous. We're seeing it in other assets as well, like debt markets, not just the U.S. government, T-bonds. Muni bonds are collapsing. High yield corporate debt ETFs like HYG, JMK, they're in collapse mode. They're going down with the stock market, but they're they're pushing levels such that the muni bond ETF and the high yield corporate debt ETF closing the month where they are now take out 10 years worth of prior low closes. 10 years. The only thing left on those is the 2009 lows. So it'd be like the S&P now down at about 2000 or something. Uh, it's 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 a major collapse. And so the paper asset bubble is broken. The question then is, for those who believe that the Fed is, you know, somehow the wizard that maintains control over the universe, are they going to continue to allow this to unfold and unravel? They pricked their bubble, their own bubble. They pricked it with a big pen. And instead of deflating inflation, they're deflating the inflation bubble that they created, paper assets. And once they recognize the consequences of that, for instance, we're seeing some of that in the UK, where they're having to come in and defend their bonds. Europe is in dire straits. China is not doing well. So a lot of paper assets are imploding around the world. Do you think the central bank here will continue to posture itself in such a way that it doesn't come to the defense of these assets? Because if they don't come to the defense of these assets, then you can have cities and states in dire straits very quickly. You're going to have pension funds unable to meet their requirements because the assets that they bought over the years recently to get higher yield are killing them, not helping them. So we have a, a crisis at hand that's likely to pick up speed in a way that the chaos theorist would say, aha, we've gone from incremental trend to a chaos resolution. 
where things unravel quickly. It's during that time that we expect to see gold and silver the bottom out of this situation and go contrary to the paper asset bubble breakage. So it's something we're monitoring at MSA constantly. We think that's going to be the outcome. We're starting to see some of the evidence of that already. And uh, so that's that's our function there. First off, we're coming up on the end of the month and the end of the quarter. Whenever these time frames change, we moving averages that we measure versus and I don't mean overlaying them on a price chart, but oscillating price in relation to these moving averages. We're going to get some upturn signals in silver and gold that will we're looking for layers of buy signals. In other words, not just one magic number but it's likely to be several starting gates. And we're effectively right now trading at levels. If we're trading here next month, you're gonna to start to engage some of these even around current price levels of silver and gold. Uh, and I think you're gonna to start to see that divorce to where even price chart folks will be able to say, hey, you know, stock markets continue down, but gold is somehow uh, anchored itself and is flipping up. Now, what's going on here? It'll confuse them because a lot of people believe in that assumption that if stock market goes down, gold has to go down. It's not historically valid, technically speaking, going back through history. The correlation between the two is not that good, at best a coin toss. Yes, there are points in time where you might get a panic in the stock market, like March of 2020. You had a panic in gold as well, but quickly gold reversed out of that and uh, exploded, and so did silver. Silver went from like $19 to 30 in a matter of months. Uh, so we're looking for that divorce again. And our focus is not on precious metals as such, meaning palladium and platinum, but on gold and silver, monetary metals, because we think we're facing a monetary crisis here. And it's, it will be evident not in, in just emerging markets, which are suffering badly right now because of the dollar situation, which by the way, we think is turning the other way. But the major economies, the UK, EU, Japan, um, and we've already seen some intervention that we've never seen before. The UK has intervened, the Japanese Bank of Japan has intervened. Uh, wouldn't be shocked if the Treasury Department intervenes at some point, if they haven't already, <laughs> without announcing it. But uh, it's a monetary crisis, and I think gold will reflect the opposite of that. And frankly, it, it and silver will be the preeminent places to be as that unfolds. The miners are we define them, and silver to some extent is this way too, the screaming babies of the mama gold, okay? When gold's going up, they scream ahead. You know, it's like having dogs on a leash, they're rushing ahead of you, okay? And when gold goes down, even modestly, they go down a lot more. It's just the way they behave. But if in fact gold is turning here, and again, the evidence is not in yet, it will be defined in our reports specifically as each day goes by. Uh, Expect the miners in silver to snapshot uh, whiplash back to the upside, it, not just in terms of price, but in terms of relative performance to gold, percent gain. And we're still of the view that if gold has a major bull market that it's already in the process of, and this has just merely been a two-year interruption, which happens, by the way, in many of the gold bull markets, that there's a major interruption that lasts for a couple of years, uh, then silver will whiplash far greater on the upside on a percent basis than gold. Uh, and I remind your, your, your viewers and listeners that in 50 years going back in gold in the early 1970s, when it was only in the bullion market, not in the futures market in the US, gold went up sevenfold by 1975 when it was legalized here, sevenfold. Two other bull markets since then were eightfold moves in the price of gold. From the 1976 low to the 1980 high, and from the 1999's price levels around 250, it went to 1920 by 2011. It took it a dozen years, but it was an eightfold move. So gold going up seven to eightfold in bull markets is hardly irregular. It's done it three times in the past 50 years. Okay, our bear market low was 1,050. You do the math. If it merely has another replication of the prior three and goes up eightfold be $8,000 gold. Frankly, given the fundamentals and the macro technicals that we see, that wouldn't surprise us whatsoever. In fact, even more would not surprise us because we're in a different world now than we were in the late 70s. 
and then we were between 1999 and 2011. There's a lot of stuff going on here that is major unraveling. And the unraveling is likely to spark great panic, greater than we've ever seen among the central banks, which means what? Ongoing destruction of the real value of the money in it. 